Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Thursday, October, November 2nd at 11.38 p.m. Mountain Time 2017, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. We're going to start the update with some intense hail hitting Bogota. that person have a snowmobile look at this that is insane it looks like glaciers let's get to the article intense hailstorm hits Bogota causing severe floods and traffic chaos an intense hailstorm hit the capital, Bogota, Colombia, November 1st, causing severe floods and impressive hail accumulations. The storm caused traffic collapse and serious damage across the city, but there are no reports of injuries. That's amazing based on what we just saw here. Getting off track, California wildfires, 14,720 homes destroyed or damaged, 43 people killed, 3.3 billion the breaking point is almost being reached. Now look how cheap these houses are. There are live trees with leaves on them right next to this devastation. Think about it. I'll leave you links to all this. Typhoon Damry to slam into Vietnam with flooding rain, strong winds. This is going to affect the uh, fish market. A lot of the fish farms and shrimp farms there are going to be affected. Maybe destroyed. It's a heads up there. Price increases coming soon. Talk about flooding, rains flood, Chennai scares residents. This is a place that floods regularly. India is not having a good time with flooding. In fact, it's a record. At 183 millimeters flooding in Chennai, rains break record. Second highest in a decade. Cosmic rays, folks. Buffalo on pace for one of the wettest years on record, speaking of cosmic rays. Like many days so far in 2017, Thursday started off soggy. I'll leave you links. Buffalo, New York, folks. And going from wet to dry here, Tucson, Arizona, from a lofty rainfall surplus to teetering on the edge of deficit in the span of a few months. Therein lies the definition of the climatic changes associated with the grand minimum. Flooding, drought, all over the map. Record snows. Let's get on to this interesting article being picked up by the mainstream. Ring of Fire. Pacific Rim Earthquake Fears as 12 tremors hit island near tourist hotspot Bali in just one day. These are the New Caledonia quakes that we had a huge swarm of that I covered in great detail. Now let's listen. This is very interesting, guys. Follow me here. A series of tremors which struck off the coast of the Brit tourist hotspot in just one day has sparked fears the country may be at risk for a powerful earthquake. Now let's see why. This is so interesting. Follow me. Okay, let's skip down here. These are all those New Caledonia. Here's New Caledonia. Here are all those quakes that happened in the last few days. The tremors indicate an increase in the temperature of the Earth's core. Can you believe this is coming out of the mainstream? The tremors indicate an increase in the temperature of the Earth's core. This is awesome. This goes with the bubble muon hypothesis that we've been reporting on, which can often be linked to earthquakes of seven magnitude and higher, according to scientists at the University of Colorado. He's talking about cosmic rays, and that's where I'm at in Colorado, so I feel honored that this is actually in the mainstream coming out today. Seismic monitor Iris captured the earthquake tremors, which could potentially lead to a strong earthquake close to Australia's eastern coast. Heads up, Australia. That would be a tsunami associated with a big quake, potentially. Roger Billum said increased temperature of the Earth's core means the world has entered a period of enhanced global seismic productivity. Let me repeat that. The world has entered a period of enhanced global seismic productivity. That's our prediction here at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, uh, especially with those of us uh, that are observers, which could last for five years. Well, we're I'm predicting uh, a minimum lasting up to six decades or longer. 
So this is a low estimate here, five years. After the six magnitude quake had struck the island tsunami warning center it was a small tsunami maybe a few inches associated with this but uh and the pacific ring rim was ringing and we know that because we monitored it but this guy in the university of colorado telling us that the earth's core is heating up is awesome i love it talking about tenerife a couple of uh, you uh, subscribers have been asking about Tenerife and commenting on the fact that it's going to blow. It isn't. And this is a great article from Euronews saying why it isn't. Because these seismic storms are normal in this really low magnitude. This is a uh, – on Tenerife here, this is Tiede, uh, Tiede is the name of the volcano. Uh, but if you read in here, it uh, this seismologist is – very matter of fact here. High Higher seismic activity is not normal for TAD because he's a lazy volcano. But it's not a reason to panic. And the reason is because there is no swelling of the ground. Sporadic episodes of seismic swarms are normal, says Calvo. And the earthquakes are of low magnitude. Uh, if they were at higher magnitude or if there were changes in the ground formation then he'd be worried, but that hasn't happened. So this volcano is not going to blow. It's been doing this for decades. Moving on, apple crop damage, New Zealand, more bad news for you guys. Uh, this particular farmer is saying that uh, a particular fung fungicide they're using in New Zealand is killing the apple crop, especially the Royal Gala, and that is sold worldwide. That's going to affect the apple crop this year and fruit prices I've looked I've googled uh, lots of losses in fruit this year so let's talk about snow snowfall in Tasmania after the warmest October on record is this rare yes it is but they disregard it in the article and more is on the way snow has returned and more is on the way so heads up for Tasmania it is going to continue to snow there let's go back to the US forecast calling for warm and wet winter in Maine Portland, coming out of Portland, above normal precipitation and snowfall for you guys in Maine. It says warmer than normal. I do not believe that, but winter's slow to let go in spring. You're going to have a long winter, December icing event, high probability of snow on the ground at Christmas. I'll leave you links to that. Let's get to my area, the Colorado Daily Snow. Storm still on track for Saturday through th Tuesday. This is my man, Joel Gratz. Got a nice picture of Loveland. This is only the beginning of November, folks. And uh, there are skiing everywhere. The story of yesterday was the wind around here, especially near and along the divide. The fastest gust I could find was a 92 mile per hour at the top of Mines Peak, which is at 12.5, which is at Bertoud Pass, right outside of Denver, just uh, west of Denver there. Look at that, 92 mile an hour gust yesterday. In Colorado, looking ahead, look at the snow totals here. Here's the snow forecast through Tuesday, November 7th, guys. Four days. And we're talking Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. Look at this 41 inches. That's real right there on the Wyoming-Idaho border. You're going to have massive totals. 27 in Montana, 21, 22 in Washington, 27 in Portland, 22 here in Oregon as well. Nevada up to 22, 21. Colorado, we're going to get up to two feet. Utah sitting just under two feet. Boom. The forecast is big. And we will be covering that as it covers the U.S., over the next four days. So we're just going to end this on some good news. The ozone hole is in 2017 is the smallest since 1988. This is the global warming religiosity nonsense coming to a close. Remember the ozone hole scare? Yeah. Remember the global warming scare? Yeah. Did I just show you the forecast? <laughs> yeah. One other thing of note to bring us a smile the electric universe theory is being proven every day, and intergalactic plasma filaments have been confirmed. I will leave you links. Guys, it's a great day.
even though the earth changes are happening, this empire is going to collapse and that's going to be a new beginning. Be safe, everyone.